welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's other runtime action we're going to go over is the load a file runtime. And I'm going to just jump right in. I explained this a little bit in the save load explain video that I did. But all I really showed was that by default with all the options selected, that it's going to do the exact same thing that the common load switch is going to do. The only difference is, is that it can provide you with a, a screen sequence, so a black fade out for instance. And I'm just going to show the black fade out real quick. I think I showed the slide up in that other video. So we're going to go, I'm going to click the gem, going to save it, and then I'm going to press A, which is what's going to trigger the load of file. And you'll see that it just faded out and faded in and got me my gem, took me back to where I was on the map and all this other stuff. All right, so now let's continue on. And we're going to uh, not set this for the rest of the video so we can really focus on these other options. And these other options are basically saying, hey, I want you to load the common variable values. I want you to load the common switch values. I want you to load the scene at time of save. And I want you to load the object states in the scene at time of save. All right, so we're gonna go into these one by one. First off, let's take out object states saved. And when we go to play test this, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to save the game on a fresh restart, all right? So I'm just, I saved the game already. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go grab this gem right here. And now I'm going to press A to load a file. And remember, I never clicked save again. So this gem, technically, it, it should not be saved that I picked it up. But I'm going to press A and you'll see that I started off on a reset game because that's when I saved it basically. You'll see that the value even dropped down to zero because it loaded that variable right. But you'll see that the gem never loaded up again. And that is because the object state didn't load up. We turned it off. So we can do this again. We can uh, get this gem right here and we can now load a file. You'll see the variable value drop down to zero again and you will see that those two gems did not come back. So if we had this option on just to show and I saved again a fresh save and I went and got this item. If I press load a file that gem would come right back. Now there's one more thing I want to show too and that is I'm going to add this filter object on here and all it does is it just turns on a noise filter. It turns itself with a noise filter. All right, and here's our filter object. If I reset the map, you'll see it takes about a second for it to load into the filter that it's doing, has a little delay. And now I'm gonna save it, and I'm gonna go up and load a file. You'll see that the filter just maintained through all of it, and that is because we have keep the object states on. So now if I turn this off, and I replay test. You'll see that, let's say I save it again. And now I go up and I load a file. You'll see that it takes that second to load back into the filter. So that's another way that we can use object save states. All right, so let's move on. And let's talk about scene at time of save. And before we click it off, I just want to show you what exactly this is doing. Because you might think like everything about the scene well, really, no, it's just, it's literally the scene at time of save. So we're going to click OK. We're going to go to play test here. And we're going to, let's just say, grab a couple of these gems here. I will save it. I'm going to go into the next scene. And I'm just going to save this scene as well. So I have one gem picked up. And now I'm going to load a file. Or actually, let me exit the map. And then I'm going to load a file. And you'll see that it brought me exactly to the scene that I saved. All right, I'm going to get rid of this filter object. We don't need it anymore. And then I'm going to unselect scene at time of save. We'll click OK. Jump into it. Get a fresh save here. Go into the next scene. Collect a gem. Uh, save the game. And load a file. Oh, I got to be in the other scene. That's right. And then, uh, well, I'll reset the game, OK? And now I'm going to click A to, to load a file. And you'll see that I got the value. So I know that that gem is picked up, but it did not put me into the scene that I was in when I saved it. Because remember, I saved it over here. 
And that should lead us to the last two options, which is loading the common switch values and loading the common variable values. Now these both do the same thing, they just load the values. So I'm not gonna show an example of the switch one. Uh, the variable one is easier to see in the example I did. So by default, we've been loading the variables. We know that, and I'll just uh, reshow this so that we can focus on it. We can see that we start a game with a zero and I'm going to F1, get the common variables here, gonna save it. And then we can uh, grab these and as we save it, and then if we load a file, or I guess I should uh, reset the game, there we go. And then if I load a file, you'll see that we got that variable value. Now everything else uh, didn't change or anything because the only thing we're loading right now is the variables. And by the way, this is, this is how you can get high score systems in your title screens or Zelda-like uh, slot loads and, and, and uh, yeah, to choose your slots and stuff because you can grab variables and switches even from a current slot and then you can lay out what exactly is available in that data as well without loading the actual game. All right, so this is where the power comes in is with these common variables and switches, I think. All right, so now let's turn off the variables just to show that this is how it will react. It will not load the variables. And we're going to select some of these. We're going to save the game. I'm going to reset the game and I'm going to load a file. And we'll see that we didn't get any of those variable values. So with none of these options selected, it really does nothing and is uh, pointless to run. Now, the one thing that I don't know if I've gone over very clearly is how to choose the file slot that you want to load. And so I'm just gonna, I'll put all these options back on. And how you do that is, is it, it loads the file based off your file slot variable right here. So what you would have to do is you would have to uh, specify in a change switch variable under variable, common file slot, you would have to specify which file slot you want to load. And then you're going to place that above the load a file because you want the file slot to change first and then load. And by the way, if you are having a issue where it's, it's cause sometimes when you're file slot changing and then loading back to back, you may have an issue where you're loading the previous file slot, even though you're changing it right now, it might be too fast. So if that's the case, you can always just add a weight. I found a 0 0.05 works, and you can just add that 0 0.05 in between the file slot change and the load file, and that should work just fine. And note that this is true, whether you're file slot changing to a save game or a load file load switch or copy even. All right, so those are the ways to um, control which file slot. And now we've gone over all of this, and this is just one more step into the save load system. And with that, I will see you at the next video.